besides directly intervening in telomeres, is there another approach? And when we were thinking about <coughs> how to use telomerase in vivo, in, in, in humans, we thought, well, maybe we could get it into the, since you can immortalize cells, maybe we could immortalize the stem cell. And as I thought about that, I thought, you know what? If we went primitive enough, in a mouse there's a cell called the embryonic stem cell that makes the whole mouse. It's a totipotential stem cell. Uh, if you went primitive enough, the cell might not have decided whether even to become germline or soma. It might be a naturally immortal totipotential stem cell. Let's try to get the human. And that's the basis of, of uh, the uh, ESL. So if this was like that primitive Volvox organism, you know, these are primitive cells here that will make the entire human being, and all that was done was to take these cells out of pre-implantation embryos and grow them and capture them as stable cell lines that could be expanded. So here's one of President Bush's original approved cell, uh, embryonic stem cell lines. Now what's exciting about these cells, of course, is they branch off and make everything in the human body. I, I, you know, there are a lot of critics of embryonic stem cell research. I haven't heard them yet. Uh, argue that that's not true. They're clearly uh, a totipotential stem cell. There's a lot of excitement about them, as you can see. I mean, you've been, you know, a lot of debate about them. But what's exciting is, from a biotech standpoint, is we now have a way simply to have a bank, a master cell bank of uh, these totipotential stem cells <coughs> and scalably make everything of the human body for the first time sort of like a parts supply store for the human body. There are research markets for, of course, this, which we're developing, and therapeutic approaches. Now, let me wax poetic for a minute. Back in the era of August Weissman, <coughs> William Osler, the famous physician, gave an essay, or gave, gave a lecture called Science and Immortality, around the year 1900, and he said about Weissman's germline the following. I'm quoting, the marvelous, this marvelous embryonic substance is eternally young, eternally productive, eternally forming new individuals to grow up and perish, while it remains in the progeny always youthful, always increasing, always the same. Thousands upon thousands of generations which have arisen in the courses of the ages were its products. But it lives on in the youngest generations with the power of giving origin to coming millions. The individual organism is transient, but its embryonic substance, which produces the mortal tissues, preserves itself imperishable, everlasting, and constant. Now, some slight technical flaws in what he said, but I thought it was very well stated, and it captures some of the magic of, of this technology. <coughs> well, we've been working very hard on taking this immortal germline, these germline cells, and manufacturing purified primitive cells, precursors to the human body. As was mentioned in one of the previous talks, uh, Dr. Ferber's talk, I believe, about the, the regeneration of the salamanders, some of these primitive lineages have regenerative capacity of scarless regeneration and, and repair, and we're quite keen on capturing those and developing them for therapeutic uses. Some of the cells we've been working on are the retinal pigment epithelium, work we did at ACT. These pigmented patches of cells, when they're lost in aging, cause macular degeneration and we've been able to successfully generate those and test them in animal studies showing that they preserve and protect the retina from degeneration that occurs in this animal model. Hemangioblasts, here's an exciting cell. Um, I, I can't remember who for sure I mentioned the, the aging of the vascular system being key to aging. These cells make not only blood, but circulating precursors to the vascular endothelium, the blood vessels. They have the potential to repair our, this very complex vascular tree that's the weak, weak link in aging. And, uh, and here you can see these genetically engineered ES-derived hemangioblasts making blood vessels in vitro, repairing vasculature in vivo in animal models and in uh, the ligation of the femoral artery, uh, restoring blood flow in animals, all published data. So potentially useful in things like myocardial ischemia and so on. Well, an imaginative approach to this <coughs> was the Accelerate technology, where we generated clonal populations of cells out of this primitive tree 
generating over 140 distinct cell types, never before isolated uh, in early human development. And um, what that allowed us to do were file patents. So Louis Pasteur got an early patent on yeast, believe it or not, because he purified it away from everything else, from bacteria. And the yeast was to make beer. So he got a patent on yeast. Jamie Thompson, in collaboration with Geron, got this patent on the human ES cells because they had never been isolated. We've got patents filed on over 200 of these primitive embryonic progenitors because we clonally purified them for the first time. Patents uh, uh, pending. So what we've been doing is taking these cells and exposing them to arrays of different differentiation conditions to turn them into the final cell type and do microarray analysis to see what we've made. And uh, you know, far more data they can present in a few minutes, but here is one of the lines. It's a primitive precursor to the palate in the lower mandible, and here we can turn it into cartilage, uh, here staining for uh, proteoglycans. Uh, very pretty results.